Today I'm very pleased to introduce you to Maddie Rawlings from Zandra Labs. Hey Maddie, how are hey, you? Hey, good, how are you doing? Awesome. Uh, Zandra Labs is an interesting new business that you probably wouldn't even be aware of exists, and it's a chatbot agency. So today I wanted to talk to Maddie about how Zandra Labs came about and what, what the heck they do and what you can do for your business. So yeah. I'll stop looking there and I'll talk to you. Maddie, why don't you tell me all about Zandra Labs? Well, tell me about yourself and, and the labs and how this all started. Okay, sure. So I'm my background is a graphic designer, so yep. I'm a creative and At the time, I was running my own creative branding and graphic design studio, and I came across Jess and Zach, my co-founders, and we had this problem of um, booking rooms within this co-working space. Yes. And, yeah, we just went through a few different ways of doing that efficiently and, like, having a bit more, I guess, like an alternative way we wanted to seek that. And so we came across chatbots, and so we implemented that with people booking rooms, and, you know, it all flowed, but then there was this... Like we, we got feedback from the users and they wanted this like personal connection. They wanted to like, you know, like I said, thanks. Why didn't she reply? And just like the little chatbot? Thing, yeah, the chatbot. Right. So just little things like that that tweaked that people, they wanted this personal interaction with this like messenger platform, even though they probably knew it was a bot. Yep. So when you say, and I'm clarifying this for the yep. audience, because when I first was introduced to this concept, I struggled to understand when you say a chatbot, what are we talking about? What's the interface? Where do I go to talk to this this magical yep. robot? So the cool thing about chatbots is that you can access them on many different platforms. At the yep. moment, we're just focusing on Facebook Messenger because there's a massive audience there already and we can tap into that. But um, what it, essentially what it is, it's just an automated response that we go in the back end and plug in and, you know, Mainly we focus on a niche so we know what like intense people will have. Yeah. And yeah, it's just pretty much an automated response that you can interact with and solve problems or just have general right. conversation. So before we get into the technicalities, I want to understand how a creative like yourself yes. gets into what is a very technically technical nerdy kind of mm-hmm. industry, right? Yeah. So at first, yeah, it was quite daunting, I guess, because like you like it seems like a very tech dominated industry, which it is. But we were lucky enough at the beginning to pl- partner up with this um, software company called PullString. So yes. they, like how I like to describe it, is they're pretty much like a WordPress for bots. So as creatives, we can jump in and just plug the content in and yep. just do our thing, which is pretty exciting. Right. And you've got two co-founders, did you say? Yes. So we've got Jess. Her background is as a copywriter and content creator. And then Zach, who's just got like a wealth of knowledge and background within tech. Yeah. In business. Yeah. And did you, you told me recently you've just got back from San Francisco in the States. What was that all about? Can you give us some information on that? Yeah. So our software company, the one that we're partnering with are based over in San Fran. So we thought, you know, we might as well just like keep this relationship going show them that we're real, we're not bots. And yeah, I just went over there and I went through their workshop to become certified partners. Yes. And then we thought, you know, we might as well go check out the scene over there, see what's happening. And it was amazing. Yeah. So what is there much activity? Like how, how, how are the Americans who are always ahead of us typically, Mm -hmm. how are they using chatbots in their businesses? Chatbots, um, people, there's, there's definitely like varied ways. And I think it's still definitely new day, like early days and people discovering and like we need to go through that educational process yeah. like we just went through before, like telling people what they are. But um, what we found the main user cases to be were like marketing and customer so- like solutions or like right. services. Yeah. Right. So people would come to a website, for example, mm-hmm. uh, and then if they had a question or they wanted to, or you wanted to run a marketing campaign, they would be they would engage with a little pop up, a chatbot, which effectively is like. You know, uh, an artificial intelligence, if for want of a better word, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's right. definitely like one of the basic level ones is going to a website, having those ones that are just like, you know, frequently asked questions, some yeah. of those basic things, yeah. So at a very basic level, you could set up a chatbot to do customer support, totally. right? Helping people figure out where to go. So so all of that logic and that information, who, who puts that together? How does that work? Yeah, so that's where we come into play as an agency. We like to set ourselves as like, I guess, content creators and personality yep. developers. So we'll work with the brand find out who they are, like their purpose, yep. and align the dialogue with yes. their purpose, if that makes sense. Yep. So, um, yeah, so say if they need to solve a problem and they have like this, their brand is essentially like a fun, active like persona, we can yep. turn that into the dialogue or the character that you interact with and right. have that like coming out there. Right. So what, what 
um, what have you worked on? Any, what current campaigns are you working on? Like, if you can talk about it, maybe don't tell, say yeah, who, but, but what are they doing? Definitely. So, actually, this week we've just released a pretty big campaign, and I, we can say who it was for. It was from Tressa Garvis, a tequila company. Yes. And they have gone out and literally, because they like to leverage the fact that they are a tequila company yep. and they are made in tequila, the, the town in Mexico. Yes. So they've gone out and found these three characters and created this whole campaign around them, these like ludicrous backstories and just like yep. it's very interesting. So we come in, we came into this campaign and created the chatbots that you of these characters that you can now interact with. And the whole goal of it is that you can win a, a trip to Tequila Town, Mexico. All right. So it's yeah. it's kind of like the, the cool fact that you can turn up and you can have this automated you know, personality, yep. I suppose, interacting and talking with you. Totally, yeah. That's pretty cool. Has it, is it gone live yet? Yes. So this week they just started pushing it and they have to go through, through fate, like a few different steps to, before they get to the bot. So we'll start seeing right. people starting to interact. I actually heard you talking about how some people like to mess with the chatbots yeah. and try to break them. Can you give me some info on what that's all about? Yeah. So it's, I know this is like a natural instinct when any, anyone goes in to interact with a chatbot. It's like, I need to break it. I need to test it, <laughs> yep. like push it to the limit. So how we resolve this is we have a lot of fallback systems that kind of just lead them back to the topic that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if they're a bit rude or they have something else to say that's just not aligned with where we want them to go, we'll just be like, oh, like one of them is this old 90-year-old lady and she's like, oh, that's a bit spicy. Like let's talk about something else. So, you know, just well, are you Are you telling me that these people come in and they're trying to be a bit rude with the old lady? Yeah, yeah. It's not ideal. Oh, crazy. They can't help themselves. Yeah. All right, so so that's a great marketing. I can see how that'll get a lot of buzz. Um, mm -hmm. But let's say let's say I'm just an average business. Um, you know, got a bunch of people, got some great products. Uh, what what are the ways? How else could I use it? Yes, I could use it for customer service. Yeah. Right. Um, I could run sort of marketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. Are there any other use cases? Do you think that? I think the most beneficial thing about a chatbot is that it's like a scalable solution for having like a one to one conversations, yep. but instead it's one to many. So. Like you say, you still want to have that close interaction with your user's audience or whatever. You can set up this system where it, it has your personality or your brand or say if you are just a, a single person, like have that ability to reach many yeah. but having it through one funnel, if yeah. that makes sense. So I think yeah, absolutely. the best absolutely. way for a smaller or like a medium-sized company to use it is to have that presence. Is, is one of the benefits that it's a scalable solution? Yes, yeah. I, I would definitely say so. That's one of the key things, like showing your brand personality within a scalable solution. Right and building trust and I guess converting as well. Yeah, like, yeah. So it you can you can actually send people to an actual transactional based, uh, action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we that's part of the bot campaign with the tequila ones is that we send them a link. It goes to a website, and we've also got other things embedded in there that has links elsewhere. And can you buy? Things in a chatbot message stream. It's um, it's definitely early stages with that. There's yeah. um, I think there's a few plugins that you can add, but. At, it, it depends what the aim of the bot is, yep. but you can either send them to a site or you can have, say, like your, it's a shopping bot, you can have suggestions that send them elsewhere. Yep. Otherwise, there are things that you can literally make the transactions within the conversation. Yep. Are there any um? Have you, are there any situations or circumstances where a, ba a bot has gone awry, like totally mm. just changed the behaviour, said some really inappropriate things? I mean, surely. Yeah. Have you have you heard of the the Microsoft bot? Well, tell me about it. Yeah. I may have. Maybe there's, they have. There's a few different examples out there, but there's um. I'm pretty positive it was the Microsoft one. It just um yeah like it it had it was a very deep AI. Right. set up bot so it, it learnt things and it took on it and it evolved its character and eventually it kind of went it like people were egging it on a bit to just go a bit so what did to it the do? edge and it just uh, I think it got a bit like Nazi-ish and like <laughs> <laughs> just, just not what you want as yep. a, to represent your brand so yep. that's um, so did they, they shut it down obviously. they did they shut it down so that's a, a definitely a bad example but maybe it was one of those things where they didn't yep. have the right parameters or like fallbacks in place or so so I mean, it sounds like what you're doing is you're creating these these interfaces. You're creating a logic behind them so mm -hmm. that people can access them. And your primary interface right now is is, is messenger apps, is. things like that, yep. obviously. Um, but what you're describing there, it, it sounds like it's like artificial intelligence, right? Yeah. It's like Star Trek, right? Totally. Talking to the computer. So. Um, what's the future? Like, what, what, what are the interfaces? Is it, is it just always going to be a, a chatbot or a messenger app or something like that? Yeah, no, I think um, definitely like there's a massive movement towards going voice activated platforms at the moment and integrating yeah. it to just like, you know, everyday uses. So it could be within your house, like you talk to your fridge or 
even if you don't have to talk to it, it's behind the scene where like it, it scans what you put in there and what you put out and knows it like just automatically adds things to your, your checklist to buy yep. next time. It's just, it's about making like mundane activities just like a bit more seamless and like making sure that you can spend more time elsewhere and like, yeah. Right. Just- so the users actually extend beyond marketing, beyond traditional business and customer service. The stuff that you do can can become the the language interface with any sort of daily actions that we take, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, are you doing any work with um, you know Google Home, uh, mm-hmm. Alexa, or any of that sort of stuff? Yeah, definitely. So we're starting to branch out and put some proposals out there at the moment for Alexa and Google, and yep. yeah, there's definitely a lot to explore, especially within um well not especially but the, the, at this recently at the CES um yep. event they announced that you know like Volkswagen and a Ford and a few other car companies are starting to actually integrate Alexa into the car so wow it's another reason to look into that and start you know building That's skills true. that can just help complement life so if someone wants to learn more about chatbots mm-hmm. what do you recommend that they go like what do they read um so there's a few just online there's a lot of thought leaderships out there and yep like groups on Facebook and whatnot, um, I'd say if you could get involved with, there's this thing called Chatbots Magazine yep. or just in general like finding people on online that are involved with the industry, they like, tend to like to put a lot of yep. thought out there online. I'm going to change the pace up a little. I'm going to ask you yep. the question about, given that it was just International Women's Day, Yes. Um, Zandra has two very young women at yes. the helm. So explain to me how some someone so young Mm -hmm. gets involved with such a game-changing type of business i mean does it feel awesome to be at that sort of cutting edge of the sort of a new um opportunity yeah it really does it's super exciting and we're both you know really thrilled about it um i think the key to it was that we're both just open to opportunities and just uh, what the what's got us here is just following our passion for our careers and what we've chosen to do and that's awesome yeah that's awesome um and Sunshine Coast too. I mean, yes. the fact that you are global now, right? Your mm-hmm. your audience, your customers are global. That's got to be pretty awesome, it right? It is, yeah. Like we initially went out there saying that we're just an Australian agency and we've had to go back and have a look <clears throat> at what we call ourselves and yeah, yeah. We, we're a global agency within under a year, which is super exciting. So how did that how did that come about? I mean, <clears throat> on the Sunshine Coast, it's probably not known for its, uh, you know, its big audience or big, you know, yeah. background of technical skills. How did you guys <clears throat> get <them> together? <laughs> Sorry. Um, so... I guess it's like what I said about Jess and I ourselves, we've taken that over into our brand is just having that will and willingness to be open to opportunities yep. and we've been able to leverage a lot of what we've done and expand. So what our first, which is pretty exciting, our first job opportunity was to build a bot for a city. Yes, and that's cool. Yeah, it is super exciting. And so we just got to leverage that a lot, got a lot of coverage. And to be honest, we've had a lot of just I, like I guess we're at the initial stages, there's a lot of excitement and hype in the chatbot area, yeah, yeah. and we're putting ourselves out there earlier and trying to be the, the thought leaderships and the I guess the yeah. pioneers of that space. So, what do you think is next? I mean, what's the next transition? Obviously, you're you're doing proof of concept, you're running marketing campaigns and building interfaces with the city. What's mm-hmm. what's next for chatbots? Chatbots, I think there's a big leap to make it more mainstream. Like at the yeah. moment, it's very like the innovators are jumping on it, but we want it to become, like I said, more seamless, more just interactive daily yep. experiences. That's awesome. I mean, I, I, I grew up with Star Trek, so I'm, I'm totally <laughs> waiting for the day that I can talk to my, yep. my house, you know. Um, so where can people find out more about you guys mm-hmm. and the business itself? Where do they go? So we're very active on social media. All our handles are just Sandra Labs, so yes. X-A-N-D-R-A, Labs. X-A-N-D-R-A, yep. And then we've got our website, Xandra.com, and then always reach out to us. We're always there to chat. And- awesome. Is there a chatbot yet on Xandra? That's a bit <laughs> no, but we definitely need to do that. So <laughs> yeah. in between work, we'll definitely jump onto that. Give it personality and humor, absolutely. Yeah, like why not? Thank you very much, Maddie. I appreciate your time. Awesome. Thank you so much.